Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to Beijing uh, Brain Conference 2022. Uh, this is Forum 21, which is uh, Next Generation Brain Inspired Computing Chip and Systems. And uh, this forum is uh, co organized by Chinese Institute and, uh, for Brain Research in Beijing CIBR and also uh, Institute of Microelectronics at uh, um, the Chinese Academy of Sciences. Uh, I'm Yu Liu. Uh, uh, and uh, with my colleague, uh, Dou Chunmeng, uh, we are um, uh, the, co the host of this uh, forum. Uh, uh, today, we are very honored to, uh, to have uh, five uh, guest uh, speakers uh, to give us lectures on bio-inspired uh, uh, computing chips and systems. And uh, recently, uh, AI, big data, and the IoTs have experienced unprecedented development. It also posed grand challenge on the computing throughput and energy efficiency. Because of its uh, potential to bypass the, the von Neumann uh, bottleneck, brain inspired computing based on emerging devices or disruptive architectures have uh, aroused extensive attention from academia and also industry. So focusing on the key enablers for brain inspired computing from devices, circuits, algorithms to architectures, this forum will invite uh, prominent uh, scholars and experts to introduce the cutting edge progress in this field. So um, uh, um, uh, we uh, have five guest speakers and each uh, after each speaker finished their uh, lecture, we'll have a, a Q&A. So uh, if audience have any question, uh, uh, please uh, uh, type, in the, uh, type in the question in the, in the chat room and then we can we can uh, uh, bring the question to them to the lecturers to, to, to have a discussion after they finish the talk. Um, so first um, uh, speaker is um, uh, Professor Gao Bin uh, from Tsinghua University. And uh, uh, Gao, Professor Gao Bin is currently associate uh, professor with the School of uh, in uh, Integrated Circuits in Tsinghua University. Uh, he received a bachelor degree in 2008 and a PhD degree in 2013, both from uh, Peking University. Uh, his current research interests uh, include uh, fabrication, capitalization, and modeling of uh, emerging semiconductor devices, and design of uh, computation in memory and neural inspired computing systems. Uh, he has uh, uh, more than 100 technical publications. Uh, um, and uh, uh, he, uh, his total citation is over uh, 10,000. He served as a subcommittee chair of IEDM, IRPS, EDTM, and ICTA, and also TPC member of uh, DAC, IPTA, et cetera. Uh, and uh, his uh, lecture title is a memory sys memory sister based on brain-inspired computing in memory chip. Uh, and so now uh, let's welcome uh, Professor Galbin to give us the lecture. Thank you, Professor Liu, for the kind introduction. Okay, let me share my screen. Can you see my screen? Hello? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Bing Gao from Tsinghua. Uh, my talk title is Memorister-Based Green-Inspired Computation in Memory Chip. Uh, this is the outline. Uh, first is the introduction. Uh, in the recent years, the data are generated very fast, brings great challenge for the computing system. Uh, in, the right figure, uh, in the right figure, the black dot shows the increasing trend of computing power of CPU and the GPU chips. Uh, we can see the computing power of the CPU increased ex exponentially previously, but went to saturation recently, uh, while GPU provide uh, another solution for the computing power development, but also tend to saturation now. Uh, on the other hand, the computing power requirement for the AI training grows very fast. This requirement doubled almost every uh, three to four months. Uh, it is clear that the saturated computing power cannot meet the requirement of AI application. The main reason for the computing power bottleneck is the memory wall issue. Uh, as we know, the pre uh, present computing system all use the von Neumann uh, architecture uh, in which the computing and the memory unit are uh, physically uh, separated and the data uh, need to transfer frequently between computing unit and memory unit through buses. 
uh, in this case, the data transfer uh, and the memory access consume a lot of useless energy and time. Uh, to, solve, uh, to solve this issue, uh, some green-inspired computing technology uh, are studied. Uh, we to uh, to uh, achieve the uh, brain inspired computing, uh, we can study the brain structure uh, and uh, all the some uh, working mechanism of our brain. In this case, we can achieve significant uh, improvement of computing if, uh, efficiency. Some of the existing uh, technique, uh, including the uh, neuron synapse structure. Uh, and the event-driven uh, signal trans uh, transmission mechanism and the computation in memory architecture and the analog computing paradigm. Uh, uh, some uh, new technology uh, for the com uh, for the computing architecture. Some new technologies are proposed. Here we can see the trend. Uh, the multi-core parallel computing technique was first used on GPU. And then the processing near memory te technique were used on TPU and uh, some uh, new GPUs. Uh, however, to further increase the computing power and uh, reduce the area and the energy consumption, uh, the emerging technology such as computation in memory should be in, uh, introduced. Uh, here we call it CIM for short, that means computation in memory. Uh, we first show an example on how to realize CIM with the uh, uh, The computing task is a vector matrix multiplication, which is a basic operation in a neural network algorithm. With a memory theory, uh, it is very easy to finish this computing. We just map the input vector at the applied voltage on the array and the weight matrix is mapped to the conductance of the memory array. Then the output current uh, is the result of the matrix multiplication. So all the computing is done with a simple read operation. Uh, if we have a memory store with 64 resistive level, uh, it, is e uh, it equals to a six bit multiplier and a six bit adder and six SRAM cells. Uh, with CIM architecture, we can combine the computing unit and the memory unit into one CIM unit. The key research task for CIM are how to develop analog memory per device with good performance and how to find a new computing paradigm for CIM. Uh, on the device level, uh, we face the challenge on the reliability, variability, and the nonlinearity. While on the system level, the scalability, uh, versatility, accuracy loss, and uh, efficiency issue should be addressed. Now I will first introduce how to address this issue on the device level. Uh, this session is about memory register fabrication and integration. Uh, the analog memory register for CIM application is more complex than the binary RAM for data storage application. Here we show their performance requirement. We can see the storage application only focuses on reliability issues uh, like yield, retention, and endurance. But for CIM application, uh, we need to realize multiple states and large on of ratio. And uh, especially for the learning case, the linearity and the symmetry of conductance tuning are also important. So our first task is to achieve stable analog switching behaviors. And after that, we change to study how to improve the reliability. Uh, the device issue are correlated with amorphous effect of material and the fabrication process. Uh, but many modeling works only treated the switching layer as ideal crystalline material. Uh, to solve all these issues, we develop a multi-scale framework. The simulation starts from molecular dynamic. We first use uh, MD method to generate the amorphous half oxide structure, and then use uh, DFT to do the uh, structure optimization. We also use DFT, uh, the first principle calculation, to calculate the uh, distribution of activation energy 
on the different lattice point and getting the distribution matrix. And then we input this calculated parameter with the kinetic Monte Carlo simulator and finally calculate the device electrical behaviors and the reliability characteristic. Uh, we develop a kinetic Monte Carlo simulation method to investigate the uh, microscopic behavior of my resistor. Uh, the simulation starts from the physical processes of oxygen migration and electron transport. With the derived uh, equations, uh, we develop a framework from the whole switching process. We first calculate the electric potential, uh, current, and the temperature distribution inside the, uh, the device, and then we can get the oxygen migration and the vacancy generation probability distribution. Then we use a stochastic method to refresh the oxygen vacancy distribution and repeat such calculation until the switching process ended. Uh, with this TCAT tool chain, uh, we can know the direction to optimize the memory device. We design a thermal enhanced layer to improve the analog switching behaviors. Uh, the left figure here is our simulated device structure. We found without the thermal enhanced layer, the inside temperature in the device is not so high. But with this layer, the temperature uh, can increase significantly, even with much smaller operation current. Uh, while under high inside temperature, the oxygen vacancies tend to form scattered morphology, which means there are many weak current paths formed by percolation effect. Uh, in this case, the analog switching behavior is easier to control uh, since each weak conductive filament only contributes a little to the device conductance. While without thermal enhanced layer, the oxygen vacancy tend to form a strong filament due to the electric field concentration effect. So in this case, the abrupt switching is usually observed. Uh, therefore, we conclude that designing a thermal enhanced layer is good for improving the analog switching behavior. Then we fabricate the analog barometer device and integrate into kilobit level 1T1R array. The array is integrated with standard CMOS process. These figures show our integration process and the TEM image of our integrated device. Then we optimize our integration technology and the further fabricated large scale chips on the eight inch wafer. The cell structure is also one T1R, uh, I mean one transistor and one memristor. Uh, and the array size varies from uh, 128 by 32 uh, to 11, uh, 52 by 128. Uh, all the array support fully parallel computing as well as cell-by-cell -cell operations. We get very good performance uh, and reliability on the array. We can tune the cell on the whole array to 32 levels without any failure. We can also fine tune uh, the conductance of each device with identical port stream. And now I will introduce our STCO technology for neuromorphic computing. The so STCO means system technology co-optimization. Here on the system level, the design also faces many challenges, especially the accuracy loss caused by non-ideal effects of device and the circuit. Uh, on the device level, the parameter variations, conductance fluctuation, uh, nonlinearity, asymmetry, and other effects will influence the computing accuracy. Uh, and on the array level, uh, the fluctuations accumulates, forming larger error. So uh, each array error can further accumulate layer by layer, forming significant system error. For example, we only introduce, uh, if we only introduce 1% error on each layer of uh, ResNet 18, uh, the error of the whole network can still increase to almost 100%. So it is clear that we cannot eliminate all this effect 
from a specific level design. So the co-design from device level to the system level is highly required. So here we develop an end-to-end -end simulator from device level uh, to circuit architecture and algorithm level. The sim uh, simulator invited, uh, invites a compact model of RAM analog memory device. Uh, the name of this uh, EDA tool is CROSS, uh, means co-design platform for RAM-based computation in memory system. Uh, this is our compact model, which is a key technique for this EDA tool. Uh, it starts from our TCAD simulation results. We make some necessary uh, simplification and thus get the analytical equations. Uh, in this case, we can well capture the dynamic analog switching process and its non-ideal effects uh, like availability, uh, non-linearity, reliability degradation, and so on. Uh, we also extract a transistor model because our array is 21R. Uh, the device level considers the physics-based uh, uh, compact model, including many non-ideal effects, uh, so we can perform high-level design with consider considering all the bottom-level constraint. Uh, we can pro uh, propose some um, new method for training and for the inference. Uh, we can do uh, the STCO for the CIM with the simulator. Uh, besides the device, live, uh, device model, we also consider the IR job caused by interconnect resistance uh, the snake path issues and other array effects on the array level. Um, we also designed the periphery circuits such as ADC, DAC, MUX, SFU, shift either, and so on, and uh, include this circuit model, especially considering the circuit noise in the simulator. Uh, the network compiling uh, matrix split, uh, weight placement, uh, weight mapping, and uh, weight programming and uh, computing, uh, parallel computing on the hardware are all included in the simulator. Uh, we also develop a complete uh, software stack for the CIM system. Uh, so this is the first, uh, uh, the world first fully silicon verified simulator for CIM. We split the training process uh, with our CIM hardware. Uh, we can use the use it to benchmark the chip area, uh, chip area uh, energy efficiency, uh, latency, and the accuracy of the CIM system. Uh, we can also use it, use it to do some uh, algorithm benchmark uh, or architecture design. Uh, with this uh, tool, we propose a new hybrid training method to suppress the uh, error accumulation effects and thus improve the accuracy. Uh, the hybrid training includes off-chip EXTU training uh, stage and on-chip in-stu training stage. For the EXTU training, we first training the uh, we first train the net, uh, network model on the software with our STCO tool. Uh, here, the key technique is, uh, is to embed our error models uh, like device non-ideal effects. Uh, air job and other noise during the training. Uh, with this method, the model parameters are more robust. And after mapping the weight to the device conductance, the accuracy of the network can increase obviously. Uh, and our, uh, although the X2 training with our STCO2 can suppress uh, much uh, of the error, uh, the st uh, stochastic behaviors uh, of memory store still affect the system accuracy. So we need, we still need an in-situ training process. Uh, after on-chip in-situ training, uh, the accuracy can be recovered to the software comparable level. So here, we just need to train one or two critical layers with a small amount of data. Uh, so the overhead is not uh, too much. So during this uh, in-situ training, we also need our STCO2 to search some uh, hyperparameters. Uh, now I will move to the hardware demonstration. Uh, we developed three hardware uh, platform. The first one contains multiple CIM microboard. 
uh, each board contains a memory array and some peripheral circuit uh, and two uh, uh, and uh, the other peripheral circuits are on the main uh, main board. Uh, IPGA is used to uh, control the whole system. Uh, with this hardware emulator, uh, the benchmark for the CIM system can be more accurate. Uh, the second is a full system integrated CIM chip. Uh, this is a SOC chip, uh, and it is the world's first full CIM chip based on uh, memory array and the CMOS transistor mixed integration. Uh, it is fabricated with 130 nanometer process and contains 160 kilobit memory cells. Uh, it can perform a multi-layer uh, perceptual for pattern recognition task. Uh, the energy efficiency is as high as 68.4 POPs per watt, three orders greater than GPU. Uh, we should notice that it is a full system energy efficiency, not the array micro energy efficiency, as reported in many previous papers. Uh, the third one is the integration of uh, many different chips on board, forming a complete CIM computer. Uh, here we show the functional demo on this CIM chip. Uh, we developed this demonstration system with an IPJ board and an interface. Uh, it can show the computing power and the results in the real time. Uh, we can hand write uh, some patterns on the tablet and then the patterns are sent to the chip. Then the chip sent back the computing results as shown here. Uh, in, the, in this demonstration, we use a NIST dataset for training and we can write any digital numbers by our hand on the testing. We use the multi-array CIM system to process a CNN task. We use eight arrays to process five layers including two convolutional layers and two FC layers. Uh, MNIST dataset is used for training and inference. Uh, we can get software comparable accuracy with hybrid training technique on this image recognition task. Then we perform some complex tasks such as LSTM for natural language processing and UNET for object detection. Uh, we can, you can see, use these networks. Uh, you can see these networks, uh, including many layers, uh, very complex. Uh, the red figure show how we map the uh, width to each memory chip. Uh, this slide shows some preliminary measurement results. Uh, since the tasks are more complex than the image classification, uh, we still need more optimization. Now we can get a uh, Good accuracy with less than two point loss for NLP and less than five point loss for detection. Finally, I'd like to conclude my talk. Uh, we hope to develop a new CIM computing system. Uh, in this system, we introduce a revolutionary change from device level to compiler level. The so semiconductor device uh, change from transistor only to analog memory combined with transistor. Uh, the computing paradigm changes from digital Woody logic to analog computation based on physical law. The architecture combines memory unit and the computing unit together. However, we hope the users, uh, I mean the software developers uh, of the computer do not feel this significant change on the hardware so the software and the programming language should be maintained, uh, just maintain the same as the classic trans, uh, computers. Uh, so we also need to do more on the compiler and the instruction sets. Uh, STCO is highly required. Uh, we are now developing such, we are now developing such general purpose uh, neural processing unit chip uh, with multiple, multiple cores architecture. Uh, this build map uh, summary, uh, summarizes the uh, development history and the future trends of memory based neuromorphic computing chip. Uh, in the past years, we saw fast development of memory devices and the integration technology. Some small scale demonstration chip 
uh, were also fabricated. Uh, in the future, a complete EDA toolchain is needed to support the full system integrated chip design. Uh, and in the future, with the 3D uh, integration technology and more types of neuromorphic devices uh, are developed, a real brain-like chip may become true. Uh, these are our recent papers on STCO both there and system. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Um, thank you. Uh, uh, thanks, Professor Gobin, for this excellent uh, lecture on a memory based uh, bio-inspired CIM chip, uh, which uh, also shared uh, a, a his insight on this uh, very interesting topic. Uh, a, a Professor Gao told, uh, informed us that because uh, uh, he uh, he has uh, uh, urgent issues to deal with um, uh, today, so uh, so we have to um, uh, skip this uh, uh, his uh, Q and A. Uh, and, um, but uh, he will leave his uh, contact information and welcome uh, um, uh, you know discussions uh, uh, if later on uh, you know anybody have any question can welcome to discuss with uh, Professor Galbin. So um, uh, thank you, Professor Galbin, and uh, uh, yeah, uh, we will move on to our next uh, guest speaker, uh, Professor Da Shan uh, Shang. Uh, uh, professor Da Shenshang is uh, currently a professor in the uh, Institute of Microelectronics uh, Chinese Academy of Sciences in Beijing. He received his PhD degree in materials physics and chemistry from uh, Shanghai Institute of uh, Ceramics, uh, uh, CAS. And during uh, 2007 to 2018, he is a postdoctoral research, uh, researcher at Seoul National University, a uh, Hongbao research fellow at uh, RWTH Aachen University, a visitor at Cambridge University, and associate professor at the Institute of Physics of CAS. His, his research interests are in neuromorphic computing sensing devices, algorithms, and the circuit systems. He has authored and co authored over 110 papers in, in peer reviewed academic journals. His lecture title is A Few Shot Graph Learning with Computing in Memory. Let's welcome Professor Shang Da Shan to give us this uh, lecture. Hello? Yes. It's okay? Yeah, yeah, we can hear. Okay, okay. Okay. Uh, my name is Da Shen Shang from the Institute of uh, uh, Macroelectronics uh, in Chinese Academy of Science. Uh, today, I will share a, a recent work uh, with you. So the title is uh, The Few Short Graph Learning Based on Homogeneous Computing uh, in Memory. Uh, this is a uh, outline of my talk. So let's start with the motivation and the challenges of this work. Uh, we know uh, graphics, graphics are a general language to describe the entities and their relations. As we know, the graph structure date nowadays uh, are ubiquitous in a lot of uh, high impact applications, uh, such as the COVID-19 networks for the transmission analysis and the prediction of chemical properties of molecules for drug discovery and identification of netlist elements for the circuit annotation and the recommender systems of the uh, social network. Uh, now let's take a social network as an example. So each node in the graph represents a user. Uh, if the relationship between the users is friends, uh, the, con the connection between nodes uh, can be represented uh, by the ages. So classifying the users by the uh, occupation is one of the tasks that need to be handled uh, in the social network. But uh, in the real world, uh, a large portion of nodes classes only contains a limited labeled uh, instance because the data annotation needs a large human cost and human work. Uh, so when, when we predict the occupation, for example, of the users, in the social network, the traditional uh, deep learning methods will fail uh, to make a correct decision because they cannot 
rapidly generalized from a few examples. Uh, so one promising approach, approach has, uh, which has been uh, reported uh, previously for the few short graph learning is a memory augmented neural network model, uh, MAN. Uh, the MAN architecture consists of a, a conventional neural network as a controller uh, for the feature extraction and uh, external memory uh, where the features are stored and recorded uh, later. Uh, during the meta training phase, the, uh, the controller is optimized to uh, extract the feature vectors from uh, different classes and put them for, uh, further apart. Then the extracted features are stored in the uh, external memory and retrieved for the new queries. Uh, during the meta testing phase, uh, the trained controller can extract features from unseen classes uh, by comparing the feature of a new query with all stored features in the external memory, uh, the MAN can predict successfully the class of the new query by calculating their uh, similarity and uh, determining the closest one. Uh, the MAN can be uh, implemented on a, a graph a processing unit that is a GPU uh, backed by some uh, external memory such as the DRAM approach. Uh, where the feature vectors are uh, extracted by uh, performing a neural network on the GPU, such as the uh, uh, conventional, uh, <coughs> conventional uh, convolutional uh, neural network. And then the extracted features are stored in the external memory. Uh, during the similarity uh, calculation between the query vectors and the stored vectors, uh, all memory entries uh, in the e external memory needs to be transferred from the memory mm -hmm. uh, to the processing unit. Uh, OK, due to the uh, physical separation between them, that is uh, uh, will meet a, a bottleneck uh, from the von Neumann architecture. Uh, this stage transfer uh, will result in a large energy and licensing penalties and have been uh, the main part of uh, execution time and energy consumption of MAN. Uh, to reduce the latency and the energy, uh, the content addressable memory, uh, we call it a CAM, uh, are used as the external memory to accelerate MAN. A uh, CAM can not only compute the uh, humming distance uh, within the memory itself, uh, but also uh, support a single parallel search operation over all memory entries uh, in, in one step. Okay, the so conventional CAM are uh, based on uh, CMOS uh, state random access, mem uh, access memory technology, uh, that is the uh, SRAM, uh, which are uh, volatile and require at least uh, 16 transistors, uh, uh, which leads to a, a large area and uh, high standby power. Uh, recently, uh, non volatile memory devices, such as uh, uh, conventional flash or the phase change memory, the magnetic tunnel junction memory, the ferroelectric field effect, tra uh, field effect, tra uh, effect transistor, and RAM uh, have been exploited to implement uh, various camps. Uh, they can ex uh, execute search operation efficiently due to their computing in-memory capability. Although the CAM-based MAN uh, could provide a promising way to address the bottleneck of von Neumann architecture, uh, there are still several challenges that need to be addressed for a few short graph learning tasks. Uh, the first one is related to the peculiarity of graph data structure uh, in contrast to uh, conventional test and image data, uh, which lie in Euclidean space. A graph structure data lies in non-Euclidean space. Uh, therefore, uh, it's more irregular and noisy, and it exhibits more complex relations among nodes. Uh, if directly using the traditional uh, deep learning model uh, as MAN controller, uh, the underlying uh, graph data structure is hard to be captured. Moreover, uh, the large amount of uh, iteration for the graph embedding uh, is also involved in the uh, back propagation, uh, making the meta training. Uh, more complicated and uh, expensive. Uh, another challenge is about the uh, uh, hardware uh, scaling up. 
So although the uh, CAM-based external memory can lead to substantial savings in latency and energy, uh, the controller uh, is still implemented on a conventional hardware system, leading to a high energy consumption uh, in the feature extraction process. Uh, so moreover, because of the uh, different device structures and uh, peripheral circuits between the controller and the CAM, uh, it's hard to integrate them on a single chip, so which uh, limits the further scaling up of the MAN uh, hardware system. To address the above uh, challenges uh, in, in our work, uh, we present an end-to-end -end RAM solutions. Uh, we propose a robust and energy efficient model called a memory augmented graph neural network, uh, MAGN. Uh, the MAGN consists of uh, three modules. Uh, the first module is an echo state graph neural network. Uh, we call it ESGN. Uh, it serves as a, a controller for the graph feature extraction. Uh, the second module is a binary neural network, BNN. Uh, it's used as an uh, encoder uh, for the bipolar graph feature vector generation. Uh, the third module is an associative memory. Uh, for the feature vector storage and retrieval. All the modules are implemented on the uh, RM chip with uh, in-memory computing paradigm. Uh, here is uh, uh, our, uh, the computing in-memory hardware uh, system, uh, which is uh, composed of the host computer and a, a PCB integrated with a, a 256 kilobit 21R RM chip and some uh, ADC or DAC and other links SOC. Uh, the controller uh, encoder and uh, associated memory uh, can seamlessly interface with each other uh, with the aid of the FPGA with the link SOC. Uh, the vector matrix uh, multiplication operations uh, in the uh, three components are performed by the uh, RM, uh, leading to a reduction uh, in latency and uh, energy consumption. So we now present the detail uh, of our MAGN model and its hardware implementation. Uh, first, the controller is the MAGN. Uh, it's an echo state graph neural network, uh, that is the ESGN. Uh, it can effectively extract uh, graph features by in employing uh, iterative random projections. Uh, the most important feature of the uh, ESGN is that the weight in this model are constant and uh, don't, do not need to be uh, updated in the training process. Uh, therefore, the ESGN can be realized by uh, RM array with fixed uh, random resistance, which is very friendly uh, for the hardware implementation. Uh, the fixed random uh, array can be obtained uh, simply by the RM site operation. Uh, thanks to the stochastic air motion mechanism of the uh, resistance switching. Uh, they obtain the, uh, uh, each RM conductance uh, undergoing site operation uh, will show a, a Gaussian uh, distribution, uh, which satisfies the random feature required by the ESGN. Uh, to implement the ESGN on the RM array, uh, the random RM, uh, uh, RM array is divided Firstly, into two sub arrays to represent the input uh, weight matrix uh, W in uh, and the hidden uh, weight matrix uh, W H. Uh, next, we introduce the uh, graph embedding procedure. Uh, for a given pro uh, graph, uh, the input feature vector of the model uh, of the node I uh, at the initial step uh, is uh, x i zero. Then. Uh, uh, the input feature vector of the node uh, undergoes a random projection uh, using the input weight matrix W in uh, to obtain its input projection UI. And after that, we find the uh, corresponding neighbors of the node I, that is the nodes uh, no, uh, N1, N2, and N3. Uh, finally, uh, we aggregate features. Uh, from the local neighborhood of nodes uh, using hidden matrix weight matrix WH. Uh, the embedding of node at the next step 
uh, is co-determined by the uh, neighboring contributions and uh, input projection. Okay, this is an embedding process. Uh, this process will uh, iterated by man many times until the effective graph represent uh, representation is obtained. Uh, the entire uh, iteration is implemented using the fixed random RM array by taking the uh, in-memory computing paradigm. Uh, the evolution of the graph embedding uh, vectors along iteration steps is shown here. Uh, for clarity, to only uh, 50 of 200 dimensions are shown. Okay, then we present the uh, binary neural network for a feature encoder. So we selected the uh, BNN, the binary neural network, as the encoder uh, in the MAGN model. So it maps real value vectors uh, extracted from the uh, controller to bipolar vectors for similarity calculation. Uh, the weights in BNN are bipolar and can be uh, implemented on the uh, program, the RM array. Uh, with binary switching characteristics, uh, which is also uh, very hardware friendly. Uh, the BNN receives the uh, 200 uh, dimension real value vec uh, feature vectors uh, extracted from the ESGN and uh, converts them into 100 dimension bipolar feature vectors uh, using uh, one fully connected layer and the sign activation function. Then the bipolar feature vectors are stored in the uh, associative memory for subsequent retrieval. Uh, during the meta training process, the weight in BNN can be optimized to produce similar bipolar feature vector uh, for the same classes. Okay, uh, the bipolar weights in BNN uh, can be implemented on the uh, programmable RM array. Uh, one bipolar weight is represented uh, by a differential pair in the RM. Uh, the distribution of the high and the low conductance states of the RM and the switching endurance are shown here, uh, respectively. And uh, to uh, indicate the, uh, the programmability of our RM. Uh, the bipolar ways in the BNN are optimized by minimizing the difference or loss uh, between the prediction and the label. Uh, the weight distribution before and after meta training and the corresponding weight changes are also uh, shown the training effectiveness. So next, we present the associative memory for search. Uh, the bipolar graph feature vectors from the uh, supporting class are stored in the associative memory, uh, which is realized by the uh, programmable RM. Also, uh, we, uh, when, when a new query is encountered, uh, the search operation in associative memory is performed in parallel for the similarity calculation. Uh, the programmable RM array stores one bit of the it in uh, one differential pair also, uh, which is the same with uh, a BNN encoder. Uh, the graph feature vectors as key vectors uh, are encoded along the bit line, and the query vectors with 100 dimensions is converted to the uh, amplitude of the voltage and applied to the uh, bit line. Uh, the similarity uh, between the query vector and the stored key, uh, stored key vectors uh, is calculated by the uh, dot product. The calculated results are represented by the, uh, as the uh, sum summation current as a source line uh, by using the Ohm law and the Koshkov's law uh, in the R1. Uh, we perform a, a two-way three-shot meta testing experiment on our, on our RM chip. Uh, each adjacent uh, column pair uh, along the bit line represent one uh, feature vector. So six learned graph features are programmed into uh, 12 columns of the programmable RM array. Uh, the program and the read speed of, our, uh, of the RM device are uh, 50 and 10 nanometers respectively and the conductance measured in the associative memory are stable without uh, relaxation. So in order to verify the effectiveness of our proposed MAGN model and its RM-based hardware implementation, uh, we uh, introduced the experimental settings and then 
present uh, experimental results. Okay, uh, first uh, we introduced the this site construction uh, we used uh, for a few short graph learning tasks. Uh, we selected the Cora data site, uh, which is a, a graph data site about a citation network of uh, scientific papers. It consists of uh, 2,708 nodes. Uh, each of them represent a uh, scientific publication and belong to uh, one of seven research disciplines. Uh, this data site contains uh, 5,429 ages. Uh, each age of the graph represents a citation uh, relationship between two publications. To construct the few short graph learning tasks uh, using the Cora data site, uh, for example, a, a two way uh, three short task, uh, the Cora data site is organized into a, a testing site uh, consisting of nodes from two classes and the training site. Uh, consisting of the nodes from the rest five classes. Uh, we randomly sample uh, 12 labeled nodes from the training site and mask the rest as unlabeled nodes. Uh, six of the uh, 12 labeled nodes are, the, uh, are at the support site and the rest are at the query site. Uh, we train the MAGNA model with uh, uh, a set of meta training tasks. Uh, the training goes uh, episode by episode until uh, convergency. Uh, in this process, the uh, training loss is minimized, uh, resulting in an improvement of the accuracy in each meta training task. Uh, because of the weights in ESGN, uh, do not need to be uh, trained, and only the weights in the a BNN encoder is required uh, for training. Uh, so the total meta training energy of the ESGN can be uh, reduced significantly. Uh, to demonstrate this, uh, uh, this reduction, uh, we perform the same meta training task by a, a graph convolutional and, uh, neural network, uh, GCN, uh, which is a, a very popular uh, graph neural network model. So all the ways in uh, of GCN need to be uh, optimized during training. So we calculate the uh, training energy consumed by uh, both GCN and the ESGNN uh, to reach the uh, similar meta testing accuracy. Uh, the results show that uh, the ESGNN uh, sh uh, shows a 40 fold reduction in one episode comparing with the uh, uh, training energy of uh, GCN. Uh, after training the MAGNN model, uh, we perform a, a two-way three-shot meta-testing experiment on RM chip. Uh, the bipolar uh, feature vector from the support side is generated from the uh, forward path through the ESGN and the BNN and are stored in the associative memory. Then uh, six query feature vectors from the uh, query side is similar, uh, similarly generated. Uh, we calculated the uh, similarity alpha uh, between the query vectors and the stored vectors in associative memory by uh, dot product. And then calculate the similarities score uh, with the absolute value of alpha, a multiply value uh, vector stored in the associative memory. Uh, the class prediction of the uh, queries can be obtained according to the maximum similarity. Uh, the results show that the class prediction of the uh, queries are consistent with the uh, labels indicating that the meta training uh, leads to a similar feature uh, for the same class. We now show the uh, experimental result for a few short learning problems with uh, varying complex complexities of the tasks. Uh, we evaluated the performance of the imaging model with uh, both GPU backed by uh, external DRAM memory and uh, RM-based platforms on our few short tasks. Uh, it can be seen that the RM-based MAGN platform exhibits uh, a close uh, meta-testing accuracy to the GPU-based platform in almost all the uh, four uh, few short tasks. Uh, the slight accuracy de uh, degradation uh, can be uh, attributed to the non-idealities of the uh, RM. This result indicates the high adaptability of the RAM-based MAGN platform for different uh, uh, complex tasks. 
uh, the latency of a single search and the updated operation in associative memory is also evaluated for the uh, two-way three-shot task. Uh, we achieve a 70-fold reduction in search latency, a 250-fold reduction in uh, update latency on RAM-based MAGN compared to the uh, GPU backed by uh, DRAM. Uh, the better performance of the RAM-based MAGN uh, actually benefits from the uh, computing in-memory paradigm of the RAM chip, uh, which uh, reduces the data, mo uh, data movement uh, from the memory to the processing unit. Uh, the end-to-end -end inference energy consumption uh, is also evaluated in uh, two-way three-shot meta-testing tasks. Uh, the RM-based MAGN show a, a 60-fold uh, reduction. Uh, from the uh, decomposition of the inference energy, uh, we can see that uh, when the MAGN model uh, is implemented on uh, the GPU backed by DRAM, uh, the controller uh, actually accounts for most of the energy consumption uh, because of the uh, data transfer uh, between memory and the processing unit. Uh, when the uh, MAGN model is uh, uh, it, it entirely implemented on uh, RM, uh, not only the controller, but also uh, the encoder, as well as uh, uh, associated memory are all performed with uh, computing in-memory paradigm. Uh, so, uh, uh, which uh, uh, significantly uh, reduce the uh, uh, energy consumption. It should be noted that in the uh, RM-based uh, MAGN, uh, the, the additional uh, energy consumption by the uh, ADC uh, is introduced uh, and accounts for the main part. And that also indicates further optimization of the uh, peripheral, uh, peripheral circuit uh, is still required for the RM-based computing uh, in-memory hardware system. Uh, the MAGN and accuracy have a, a tight relation uh, with the uh, associated memory size and uh, RM device non-identities such as the uh, uh, conductance variation, uh, read disturb, and so on. And to evaluate the, uh, the influence of associated memory size on the accuracy, we performed uh, simulations of a uh, uh, three-way three-shot meta learning task uh, with increasing the number of the uh, output neuron in the BNM encoder, uh, which means uh, increasing the uh, dimension of the extracted ground feature vectors. And then, uh, uh, need a large uh, associated memory size. The results show that the uh, meta testing accuracy increased uh, gradually uh, with increasing the associated memory size and approaches nearly to the uh, software baseline uh, by GPU uh, when the associated memory size reaching uh, uh, near uh, 9,000 bits. Uh, in addition to the uh, MAGN, and as the MAGN uh, uh, also show high uh, immunity uh, to the connectance variation of the RM device. Uh, this feature can be attributed to the uh, intrin intrinsic robustness of the bipolar weights stored in uh, the associated memory. And the larger associated memory size uh, further contribute to uh, better robustness of the MAGN model to the uh, connectance variation. Uh, this simulation uh, exhibit a potential of the scaling up of uh, our MAGN model to more complex real-world problems. Uh, okay, in the end, uh, let's give a, a brief uh, summary. Uh, in this work, uh, we present the first uh, uh, chip-level demonstration of few-shot graph learning. Uh, we proposed the uh, uh, MAGN model and implemented it on a, a single uh, computing in-memory RAM. Uh, we validated the high end-to-end -end accuracy of uh, uh, near 78% uh, on the graph data side, Cora, including to the software baseline uh, near 80%. Compared to, the, uh, to that on the uh, GPU backed by the DRAM platform, uh, we achieve almost 70-fold and 250-fold uh, uh, reduction in search and uh, uh, update latency respectively, and almost a 60-fold reduction in uh, inference energy consumption. And this work uh, has been uh, accepted by the IEEE Symposium on VRSI uh, in this year and has been uh, published now. So uh, more details if you want, 
uh, can be found in, uh, in this paper. Uh, okay, uh, I, I, I'd like to thank to my uh, uh, co-workers, uh, including uh, some uh, PhD students, uh, Wu Yuzhang, Yi Li, uh, Da Nian Dong, uh, Nan Jia Jiang, uh, Fei Wang, Zhe Yu Wu, uh, Ren Rui uh, Wang, and Professor Xiao Xin Xu, uh, Chun Meng Dou, and Professor Ming Liu from the Institute of uh, uh, Microelectronics, Chinese Academy of Science. And the PhD student Shao Tsung Wang and the Professor uh, Zhong Li Wang uh, from the University of Hong Kong, and the Professor Kai Ni from the Rochester uh, Institute of Technology. Uh, that's all of my presentation. Uh, thank you for your attention. Mm, Professor uh, Da Shan uh, thank you very much for uh, pre pre presenting very interesting work on RM based. Uh, um, um, uh, MAGNN and this monolithic uh, chip implement implementation. And now let's start the Q&A. Um, and so if anybody have questions, please uh, discuss with Professor uh, uh, Da Shan Shang. Uh, yes, we have uh, collected a few questions. Uh, so first, a question is uh, the uh, the feature extractors in the proposed systems seems need to be on-chip trained. So consider RM have limited endurance and maybe not possible for training. So how do you solve this problem in the system? Uh, okay, uh, thank you for your uh, question. Uh, yes, I agree with, uh, with your opinion. The, the RM endurance uh, is very important. Uh, to the uh, computing in memory and uh, to the feature extraction uh, in our model. Uh, uh, to address this issue, so in our work, we uh, developed an echo state uh, graph neural network, uh, that is uh, uh, the ESGNN. Uh, this is a special uh, model uh, for the graph feature extraction. Uh, this model, ESGN model, employs uh, the reservoir, reservoir computing uh, architecture with random and recurrent interconnections. Uh, the weights uh, of the ESGN are uh, initialized randomly and then fixed during the feature extraction. Uh, and therefore, the weights of the uh, feature extractor uh, do not need to be update, update uh, during training. Uh, so moreover, the encoder uh, in, the, in our model, MAGN model needs to be uh, trained. So, uh, we use the, uh, uh, the binary neural network, DNN, as the encoder to perform the uh, training, offline training, actually, uh, to optimize the BNN weight. So, so our, our uh, RM chip shows a, a good uh, binary uh, switching endurance to support the uh, encoder for training. Uh, so uh, this is uh, maybe the, the main reason why uh, in our model, uh, we can solve the uh, endurance problem. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Professor Shah. Another problem is uh, uh, what's the difference between the traditional CAM and 1T1R RM based CAM? What's the major advantage of 1T1R uh, RM CAM? Uh, okay, uh, 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 thank you. Uh, uh, this is a good question. So, yes, uh, we use the uh, 1T1R RM array in our model and, uh, to, to implement the uh, associative memory or the external memory uh, for the uh, few short graph learning. Um, but uh, in, uh, we use the uh, RM array to implement the uh, similarity calculation. And this is because uh, the traditional uh, CAM, uh, the traditional CAM mostly work on the uh, discrete uh, Hamming distance calculation, uh, which is mainly used for uh, actually for, uh, for the binary uh, classification tasks. And the uh, limits is application to multi-class classification task. Uh, that is to say uh, the traditional CAM can only identify the uh, exact match or the, dis the degree of match up uh, to uh, very few bits due to the uh, discrete nature of Hamming distance between uh, the vectors. Uh, uh, instead, the 21R RM based CAM, uh, CAM performed the uh, search operation with the vector uh, mat matrix multiplication, uh, which can be uh, realized by the dot product operation and can be used to uh, approximate the 
causing distance between the uh, vectors. Uh, so therefore, the 1T1R uh, RAM based cam can, uh, can rank the similarity uh, in an analog fashion according to the, uh, uh, the, the cosine distance. Uh, but actually, uh, strictly speaking, the 1T1R RAM in this work is, uh, cannot be called a cam, uh, but just play a role uh, of a uh, cam. And uh, it's better to call it uh, associative memory, I think. Uh, Professor uh, Sharma, I have a, a short question. Uh, uh, for the RM, uh, I think there's one slide that says that for the RM based uh, MGNN, is, uh, the power consumption percentage wise right now is uh, ADC is dominant. It's about yes. over 70%, right? So, so, so could you shed out some light on, uh, you know, what is the current trend, you know, to deal with this? Uh, uh, should we uh, like focus on to reduce the ADC power consumption or uh, is there some uh, exploring other architectures uh, to, uh, to, to, you know, to, you know, to, you know, yeah. bypass this? Uh, thank, thank you, Professor Liu. And this is a, a big challenge, I think, uh, for almost all the computing in memory systems. Uh, well, we know the peripheral circuit uh, optimization is a uh, it's very important topic in this research field. Uh, that is, I think uh, in our work, we uh, our focus is uh, uh, on mainly on the model and uh, its hardware implementation. So uh, we, uh, we 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 have no uh, optimization on the peripheral uh, circuits. Uh, but later, I think as you have said, the ADC occupy the main part of the energy consumption. So later, maybe I. Uh, we will uh, think about it and uh, pay more attention to uh, solve it. Uh, mm -hmm. But I, 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 I have said it's a, it's a big challenge. Uh, yeah, I think it's a very not, big challenge. Not only for yeah. our work, but for uh, almost all the computing in memory systems. Yeah, yeah, uh, I agree. Maybe we, later yeah. we can uh, we can have a deep talk about mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. this uh, yeah. optimization strategy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay, uh, uh, thank you very much uh, uh, for uh, giving us this very uh, interesting talk. Uh, our next speaker is um, Professor Wei Wang uh, from Pengcheng Lab. Uh, uh, Professor Wang is, um, uh, is currently uh, a, research, a researcher at Pengcheng Lab, received his PhD from uh, Institute of Microelectronics, uh, Chinese Academy of Sciences in 2016. He continued his research work as a postdoctoral researcher at uh, Polytechnico di Milano and the Technion Israel Institute of Technology in Italy and Israel, respectively. His research interests include uh, resistive memory devices and the neuromorphic computing, dedicating to realize uh, a highly efficient and intelligent computing system. He has published more than 40 papers and uh, he uh, received multiple awards, including the Andrew Viterbi Award of Israel Institute of Technology and the Eli Kaufman Award of Israel. His uh, lecture title is a man Rister Accelerated Deep Belief Neural Network Training and Inference. Let's welcome Professor Wang give us his uh, talk. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Professor Liu, and uh, thank you for the introduction and uh, the invitation. Uh, it's a great honor to have a talk here. Uh, this is Dr. Wei Wang. Uh, I'm from Pengcheng Laboratory, uh, Shenzhen, China. Uh, I'm, uh, today I'm talking about uh, Memoristor Accelerated Deep Belief Neural Network Training and Inference. Uh, my thanks also should be given to the previous speakers who uh, introduced a lot of uh, background about this uh, uh, neuromorphic computing and computing in memories. Uh, so today I will walk you through uh, several topics. First is what are the deep belief networks, DBNs, and the restricted Boltzmann machine. So uh, restricted Boltzmann machine and deep belief networks are based uh, 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 a class of neural network uh, in the type of energy regulated neural networks. So uh, the first energy regulated neural network is uh, Hopfield neural, net neural network. In Hopfield neural networks, uh, all the neurons are connected to other new neurons, and the internal potential of each neuron can be expressed as the weighted, uh, uh, weighted summation of all other neurons. The neurons can be in a binary state, can be in the one state, uh, state one, 
uh, if the internal potential is higher than zero, and uh, it would be in the state zero if the uh, internal potential is slow than uh, small than zero. Uh, John Hopefield first find that these systems has an energy, and the energy have a have a form of this. It is the uh, summation of all the uh, neurons state multiplied by the connections between them. So the systems. Uh, would you value uh, automatically evolutions from high energy points to the energy minima points. The energy minima is also called attractors. And through these evolutions, it, it uh, performs the computations or some cognitive functions. But this is not, uh, this is a theoretically very interesting neural network, but not uh, very well uh, uh, performed in applications. And then people find that uh, Boltzmann machines is more powerful. In Boltzmann machines, the neuron state is still binary, but is uh, uh, activated with probabilities. Uh, the pro the pro the it can be in the state one with the probability of uh, uh, this uh, sigmoid function of uh, the energy difference. Energy difference between the uh, between its excited state and uh, silent states, and these values uh, actually is the internal potential of each neuron. And use this stochastic neurons, it can skip from poor minima uh, energy minima points, and the temperature here actually is controls the amount of the noise, so uh, it uh, it can. Uh, control it, how it can escape from the poor minimum. So, uh, this is still not so convenient to training and uh, to to uh, to use for applications. So people uh, re realize that restrict version of the Boltzmann machine called the restrict Boltzmann machine is more powerful. Uh, in restrict Boltzmann machine, they Se separate the units to high hidden units and visible units. All the visible units and hidden units uh, can have fully connected uh, weights between them, but there are no connections in among the visible state and among the hidden states. Uh, so the operation of this restricted Boltzmann machine would be quite simple. The thermal equilibrium of the system is iterative forward and backward pass. Uh, from the visible unit state to hidden unit state, and from hidden unit state back to the visible unit state. The learning rules would be also quite simple. It is called constructed divergence. I will walk you through these uh, two points. Uh, so if we have a restricted Boltzmann machine and we want to uh, train this neural network to learn a patterns, we first uh, put this input data uh, sampling this input data to binary states, either zero or one. And uh, this binary state uh, is called with, uh, uh, was the state of the, or would be the state of the visible units. And it would be uh, multiplied with the weight matrix and get the uh, input to the hidden unit state. The hidden unit state would be uh, uh, acted uh, would be functioned by a function, sigmoid function or logistic function like this. And the result would be uh, in the range between zero and one. So this would be the probability of the neurons to be one or to be zero. So if this values is higher, it has higher probability to be one. Uh, uh, then we can use this hidden unit state as the input of the uh, uh, of the backward pass. We get the probabilities of the visible unit state and simply get the binary state of the uh, visible state. We call this reconstructed visible state. And then we do another forward pass, get the probability of the hidden unit state and simply get the binary state of the hidden unit states, reconstructed version of the hidden unit states. Uh, finally, we get actually four uh, vectors, 
uh, which are all binary uh, values. And we use these four values to calculate the, uh, a variable called constructed divergence, CD. Note that each of these vectors, V, H, uh, and reconstructed V and H, are all binary vectors. And we, we are doing the odd products of these vectors, so we get a matrix. And all the elements in the matrix are either minus one, zero, or one. So it is a binary matrix. We use this construct, constructive divergence CD to update the weights. And this process can be iteratively uh, uh, performed. So finally, this neural network would remember this method this pattern. So what, uh, what is deep belief network? Deep belief network EBN, actually it is just a simply stack, stacks, several, stack several restricted Boltzmann machine together. And it, it can be proved very quite uh, powerful. It can be used for autoencoders or classifications, uh, etc. Uh, so to train the deep Belief network. Uh, we use a op uh, it, it use an algorithm called gradient learning. Uh, so uh, when we train the first layer, after we train the first uh, restricted Boltzmann machines, we freeze the weight and use its hidden unit state as the input of the next restricted Boltzmann machine and train the next layer of restricted Boltzmann machine. Uh, 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 after that, so after uh, after the train the second restriction machine, we can train more restriction machine on top of it. Uh, so for 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 example, if we want to use this uh, deep belief network for MNIST data sets, which is the hand hand written digits uh, data set uh, to a uh, uh, very uh, very no well known benchmark. For neuromorphic, uh, for, for, for neural network. Uh, so we can use several uh, neural uh, restricted Boltzmann machine stacking together, uh, one on top of each other. And uh, the first layer as the input layers to uh, input these images. And the second layer is another restricted Boltzmann machine. And the third layer is uh, a restricted Boltzmann machine with the labels of this data. So we can train this uh, restricted Boltzmann machine one by one with uh, gradient learnings. For inference, we simply expand the last layers uh, to uh, using the label as the topest layer and uh, input the, uh, the, the, the image and we will get the uh, correct label, hopefully, if the training is successful. Uh, so what is the difference between the deep belief network uh, and the conventional deep neural networks? Uh, this deep belief network is training using constructive divergence and gradient learning, while conventional deep neural network or deep learning is using aerobic propagation and the gradient descendants. There are quite a lot of uh, uh, difference. First is, Training of the uh, deep belief network uh, of the front or bottom layers does not need the labeled data. So the training, most of the trainings are unsupervised, unsupervised learning. And the weight values are calculated, weight update, uh, that is the constructed divergence, is calculated only rely on local information. That is when we train the first layers, we only rely on the information of the visible units and the hidden units of the first restricted machine layers. While in the deep neural network, deep learnings, we need to calculate the weight updates uh, uh, request, uh, uh, rely on the errors uh, back propagate from the top east of the layers. Uh, and the third difference is the weight update values are all unitary. We, we see that the constructed divergence are either minus one, zero, or one. So it is uh, quite simple. Um, the last difference is that uh, although the width 
still are analog or uh, represent uh, in floating points, uh, floating point values. All the activations, all the uh, neuron values are binary. So that would be very uh, uh, handy for us to uh, implement this neural network in hardware. So let's dive in it to how to uh, uh, perform this neural network in hardware. But uh, before that, another difference uh, between the deep belief network and the conventional deep learning neural network is that the deep belief network is actually a generative model. So the model, the deep belief network is actually try to find the joint probability of the data X and the label Y, while the deep uh, neural network or deep learnings are uh, discriminative models. Uh, they, are, they are trying to find the mapping between the data and the output. So uh, from these illustrative figures, we see that actually the gen generative model of the deep belief network can find a better, theoretically can find a better uh, uh, connections between the uh, input image and the, the output labels. Um, so uh, how to implement this uh, uh, restricted birth machine and uh, deep belief network in hardware and accelerate it? The basic idea uh, for is using the memorist arrays to accelerate the vector matrix multiplications uh, in the uh, restricted Boltzmann machine uh, operations, uh, both in forward and backward, but different from the uh, deep learning or deep neural network. Uh, here we see that we only need to perform the vector matrix multiplications with binary input. So the input, uh, the input to the memory still arrays we only need a, a, a one bit DC or a, a level shifters to apply a read voltage to represent one and a ground voltage to represent zero respectively to, uh, to, to, uh, to apply the uh, input uh, to the memory still array. And for the output, uh, intuitively, we think we need to, uh, sense this current in high precisions as the output, as the result of the vector matrix multiplications. But uh, we see that we actually, we need to sample it uh, after a, a sigmoid function. So what we do is we just uh, input, add a, add a noise current to this current and uh, uh, compare this noise current with a reference current. Then we, uh, we get the compared result. If this current is higher, and this, the output uh, would be have higher probability to be in one state. And if the current is lower, it would have high probability in the zero state. So uh, you can model it that you can, uh, uh, mathematically and find that this probability, if we assume that the uh, current noise uh, generated by this simple circuit uh, is uh, in a Gaussian distribution, we would say that the probability of this hidden unit state, the output of the neurons uh, would be uh, 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 error function is uh, like this. Actually, this error function is emulate the sigmoid function, the logistic function we are trying to achieve. So in summary, uh, here in summary of these slides, all input and output are, uh, are binary. So we do not DC to apply the analog voltage on the memory still arrays. And we can do in situ, in situ stochastic sampling with the help of injection, uh, injecting a noise current. So we do not need ADCs, uh, analog to digital converters to read out the analog current output of the array. Um, so another 
uh, another techniques we uh, try to implement is separate the vector matrix multiplications of the memory still arrays uh, uh, with the constructed divergence accumulations. Uh, from the learning world, we know that we from the from the visible state, hidden state, and we construct the visible state and hidden state, we get the constructive divergence, a ternary matrix. And we need to uh, update this weight according to this constructive divergence, but we uh, do not do that directly. We uh, accumulate this uh, constructive divergence in a in a counter, in a digital counter arrays. Uh, and only if it reach a threshold and all uh, below a negative threshold, we operate on this uh, memory state, me the corresponding memory state to uh, make the weight to be higher or make, make the weight to be lower by a blind pause, blind right pause. Uh, participation pause or depression pause. So finally, we can design a mixed signal hardware circuits to do all these uh, uh, learning uh, procedures. We have a memory still arrays which do not have a VC or ADC uh, in the perif peripheral circuits to perform the vector matrix multiplications. And we have a digital uh, uh, constructed divergence counter arrays to accumulate the constructed divergence, the request on the weight update. And uh, we uh, update the weights periodically only after this weight request accumulates to a threshold. So let's see uh, what the final, uh, uh, what with this arrangement and techniques what we can we can get uh, in a deep neural network inference and training. Uh, so uh, as uh, illustrated before, we this we use this three layer three restricted bus machine stacked together uh, deep belief network for testing uh, uh, for the MNIST uh, data set, and each layer each layer of this neural network has a uh, a memory still array and the constructive divergence array. Uh, and the memory still devices, we hear, we assume it is would be highly uh, noisy, uh, highly um, known, uh, highly known ideal, because um, uh, ideally we want this uh, resistor to have a linear uh, conductance change. Uh, if we applied a positive pulse, the conductance should be increased. And if we apply a, uh, uh, a negative pulse, the conductance would be uh, depressed or uh, lowered. Uh, but in realistic, these uh, devices are highly noisy uh, and non-linearly, non-linear, uh, have a high non-linear non-linearities because at first, the conductance might change fast, and uh, later it changes slower. And there are a lot of variations, device to device variations, or uh, uh, or cycles to cycle variations. And also, we have limited uh, on off ratios. That is the uh, ratio between the maximum conductance and minimal conductance. Uh, but uh, let's work with these uh, non-ideal devices. And only, we, we also note that we use blind write. That is, uh, when, we, when we have a request to the weight update, we just send a pause, partitioning pause or uh, depression pause, and do not verify it. if it's really uh, depressed or uh, partitioning, or it is uh, um, uh, exactly Preciously uh, tuned, we do not care. We just send a pause and do not read it uh, later or before. So what we get, this is the training of the neural network layer by the layers. This is the first layers. We use the uh, 
we use the difference between the uh, visible unit state and the reconstructed visible unit states as the uh, the metrics to uh, define whether it is learning good or well or not. Uh, so if the re reconstructed image is similar to this one, that means this layer learned very well. So we train the layer, the, the deep neural network layer by layer. This is the second layer. We see the errors between the uh, input and the recon reconstructed uh, is, uh, is lower. And the, finally, the third layer. In the third layer, we input the, uh, we also input the labels and get the label reconstructed. And with that, we also uh, get the accuracy of the mm, figure uh, inference. Uh, we see that the inference could be higher than uh, 95 percentage. So uh, let's check what the effect of the CD uh, constructed divergence accumulate arrays. If we set a, a higher uh, constructed divergence uh, threshold, we see that, uh, let's see from here, we see that there are a lot of weight update uh, requests, but they are only accumulates in the constructed divergence uh, 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 counters. And only if it reach a negative threshold or a positive threshold is the memoryster in the memoryster arrays would be, their conductance would be updated. So we see that the conductance uh, the number of write operations on the memoryster is greatly reduced. This greatly reduces the endurance requirements of the memoryster. Uh, we see also here, if the mm, uh, threshold is set to the to 64, we see that uh, this is the this this line. Uh, we see that half of the device actually didn't. I haven't been uh, been operated, been been, been written, and the op the largest operation number is only about uh, uh, ten or to ten to twenty. Uh, we also check uh, since we have the uh, models of the memoristors with uh, uh, with uh, with uh, a lot of different uh, known identities. So we check the other known identities like the, connect, the number of connectance levels and the, uh, the, the degree of the known linearities, the degree of the variations on the performance of the neural network. So we see that uh, if we have a, uh, we have a, a small uh, number of conductance levels, the neural network uh, would, would still working, uh, but the there is a preferred conductance levels which is twenty or uh, ten to twenty. Uh, if the device, uh, the memory store devices have uh, such a uh, number of conductance levels, the uh, um, the neural network would perform better, the uh, perform best. And uh, we also see that the weight update no. Uh, linearities would generally uh, degrade the neural network performance, but generally they are all works. The neural network uh, uh, is generally working. And if the non linearity is uh, uh, a symmetry uh, during the increasing part and decreasing part, uh, the neural network still works. And also, if we are assuming there are cycle to cycle and the device to device variations like this and this, the neural network still works well. And actually, the, we also see that the device to device variations here, uh, we model the device to device variations uh, in, such, uh, uh, in such metrics. Uh, we found that it didn't actually Performance, the degraded performance of neural network. So uh, these are the simulations with uh, the models, the empirical models. Uh, we also validate, check the, 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 the 
neural network with the real device data from the literatures uh, for the CG, C, uh, silicon germanium uh, uh, EP uh, RAM devices, PCMO device, EC RAM device, oxide RAM, RAM devices, and the PCM devices. We uh, use our models to capture the uh, the post conductance change uh, uh, curves of these devices and use this model to validate our models. We find that all these devices can work well uh, in the uh, memory stable deep belief network. And all these neural networks achieves a higher uh, accuracy, higher than 95%. Uh, for MNIST recognition. Uh, we also uh, uh, check the overall specifications of memory store devices to achieve 95% accuracy uh, of uh, MNIS institute trainings. Uh, we see that in our neural networks, the conductance levels uh, would be uh, uh, is better, larger than 20. The off ratio is, uh, 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 is could be uh, just uh, higher than three. And also cycle to cycle device to device variations could be smaller, uh, could, be, could be larger, the, the margin could be larger. So generally it loses the, the specifications of the performance of memory stress used in the neural network trainings. Other neural networks either have stringent neural network, uh, uh, stringent requirements on the memory state devices or didn't check uh, uh, some, um, some matrix uh, of the memory state device performance. Uh, lastly, uh, an, uh, another uh, benefit of this deep belief network based on the restricted Bertman machine is that it is a generative model, as we discussed earlier. So it can be used not only for the recognition of image, but also generation of the image. So if we uh, have trained the neural network very well and feed this neural network with a label and a random initial image, we would see that this neural network finally you will, you will evaluate uh, evolution to a state to generate the image. So if we have the label to be zero, it will generate the image zero. And if we have other labels, it will generate other uh, correct uh, handwritten digits. So finally, let me draw, uh, conclude my work. And this can also serve as a take home message for you if uh, you think the, this work is interesting. So first, uh, deep belief network or stacked restricted but machine have radical different learning rules that are based on constructive divergence and graded learning. Second, all binary activations removes the need of digital to analog converter and analog to digital converters in the circuit implementations. Third, the stochasticity is needed for the probabilistic samplings. Uh, fourth, the separation of the vector matrix multiplications and the constructed divergence accumulation greatly reduce the specifications of memory state devices. Uh, thank you for your attention, and uh, I'd like to take the questions. Uh Thanks, uh, Professor Wang, uh, uh, give us this uh, excellent talk. Uh, now let's move on to the Q&A &A session. OK, uh, we have a question collect from the audience this time. So the question is, why the accuracy decreased with increasing the memory state in the page 19? Does uh, it Yes, uh, let me share my screen again. So page 19.
Yes, here. Uh, so I think, uh, yes, there are decreases of when the conductance level is, uh, uh, the number of conductance level is higher, we see that uh, there is a decrease of the accuracies because I think there are, uh, uh, there, um, actually if we see from these figures, if there are more conductance levels, that means it need more operations to, if we have a, uh, an uh, optimized conductance level for certain memristors, it will need more conductance level, uh, more operations to reach that optimized uh, points. So uh, generally we need a, a higher, uh, um, uh, a longer training epoch to reach that optimized uh, points. Yes. Oh, okay. So can we say that the the deep belief network have, um, compared to DNN, they have lower requirements on the device precision or on, on, on the variation? Yes. You mean the comparison here? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, so uh, I think different uh, uh, literatures have proposed uh, different uh, uh, architectures for the deep neural network, uh, deep learning. Uh, they, they checked uh, these uh, uh, specifications, the requirements of the memory state devices. I think all they have a uh, uh, lot of stringent uh, requirements. Uh, but here, uh, especially uh, for the non linearity of the weight updates, uh, people usually need a uh, quite linear weight updates. But here, this linear weight, weight update is not uh, uh, not needed. Other perform other requirements are all uh, reduced, especially the endurance, because actually we do not need to write uh, on the devices uh, 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 frequently. We just need to write the device in very small uh, number of operations. Okay, okay, I understand. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, Professor Wang, I have a quick question. So, so is to remove the, the DAC and ADC, and um, so it's basically a one bit, uh, you know, uh, ADC, right? So, so it's yes. Okay, so, so, so how do you deal with the quantization noise? And, you know, so is it, is it, is this something that you 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 concern or is it of your concern or is it something that doesn't matter? Uh, yes, uh, quantization I think is not a matter here. So because actually uh, we do not usually we 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 want to apply the analog value analog voltage here, but uh, since here we all have binary states, we do not have an analog states here for the input because all the inputs are simplified from uh, the output of other layers. Mm -hmm. So they are inherently binary. So okay. that, that's the one, one, one thing. And for the output, uh, we do not need to read this out. Uh, for, uh, usually we need to convert this current to a voltage and uh, use a high precision ADC to read out this uh, value out. Uh, but here we just inject a noise and uh, compare the we the uh, reference because uh, actually we, in the in the equations we we write like this we need these probabilities and use this probability to sampling uh, the value of zero and one but actually with this noise and the comparator we just uh, this hardware would do this stochastic simply in situ. In situ. Okay. Th th does the noise on the re reference current have some negative impact on your? Um, Actually, current? it might be a benefit. If there oh. are larger noise uh -huh. uh, in the reference or in the in the in the in the correct in the current here, we, uh -huh. if there is a large enough noise, we do not need this part. Okay. Yeah, I see. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. So, um, uh, if no other.
question, uh, let's uh, thank Professor Wang again. Thank you, Professor Wang. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, our uh, last uh, speaker is uh, Dr. Uh, Ximeng Zhang from Frontier Institute of Chip and System in Fudan University. Dr. Zhang received his uh, PhD degree from the Institute of Microelectronics uh, Chinese Academy of Sciences in 2020. Now he is uh, carrying uh, uh, out a postdoctoral research at Fudan University. His research interest is uh, mem resistor uh, based neuromorphic uh, devices and their system applications. He has published 11 papers and uh, had holds uh, four granted and uh, six pending patents. Uh, he was selected the super postdoctor of uh, Shanghai and the seeking of standing use of the Shanghai Center for Brain Science and Brain Inspired Technology. He won a special award for president of the Chinese Academy of Sciences. He was selected as the Beijing Outstanding Graduate, and his PhD thesis is selected as a 100 excellent doctoral thesis of the Chinese Academy of Sciences, and excellent doctoral thesis of the Society of Electronics. His uh, lecture title, title is um, Memristive uh, Mem uh, Neuron Devices and Neuromorphic Applications. Let's welcome Dr. Zhang, give us uh, his uh, talk. Thanks, thanks, uh, Professor Liu's introduction. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah. Okay, let's uh, we'll start. Okay, thanks for Professor Liu's introduction. So uh, it's so uh, so honored to be here to have this chance to uh, share our recent work based on uh, memory stable neural devices. My name is Xu Zhang from the Frontier Institute for Chip and System. So the title here today uh, of my practice is memory chip neuron devices and neuromorphic applications. Uh, this presentation is divided into five parts. So uh, let's uh, let's start with the motivation. We know the the gene based AI algorithms the development uh, has boosted the development of our human society or even. Uh, even uh, 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 even can means our life, such as the speech recognition, object recognition, or uh, automatic uh, uh, driving. However, we know the uh, development of AI algorithms propose higher requirement for the computing power of hardware. And it seems that the, the increased trend of the requirement is unlimited, just like a bottomless uh, split letter. The period that cannot be filled. On the other hand, the energy consumption is another question that cannot be uh, overlooked. And we can see that the uh, we know that the AlphaGo consumes more than ten to fifth power than the human brain. Although it it means, but it consumes much 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 more energy consumption. So we conclude that the current digital driving AI. This is a great challenge on unsustainable computing power and high energy consumption. Let's go, uh, go through the history. We know the human brain car can always be adapted to the environment and uh, uh, easy to uh, process the intelligent as tasks uh, with high energy efficiency and low energy consumption. That's so we uh, we convince that learning from brain can help us to indulge the uh, uh, AI hardware with sustain, sustain, sustainability. So we learn from brain. We let's uh, let's uh, take a look at the difference between the conventional computer and the human brain. You know, in conventional computers, it has a separate processor and a memory. The information needed to be transferred between the memory and the processor to uh, processing the information. And it is in a sequence process, also a bunch of uh, analog digital accuracy. These features introduce the, uh, additional, uh, additional computing latency and uh, additional energy consumption. Let's just take a look at the human brain. It, uh, we know it consists of neurons and synapses. The neurons are interconnected with each other through the synapses, and uh, it uh, communicates through specs. These features enable the could enable it could uh, support in memory computing, uh, parallel computing, and analog computing. 
that could accelerate the computing than the conventional computers. Except for these features, the human, the, the biology, the human brain also could support event driving or sparse computing, etc. And those have small uh, neuroscience principles. Also, the intelligence is hardware defined. So here uh, today, this presentation, we will focus on how to enable the event driving features just like the human brain does. And we know in biological system, the biological neurons are the key component to support the image driving features. It consists of uh, amounts of dendrites, uh, a cell body, and an axon. The dendrites and the cell body integrated the presynaptic inputs and generate an uh, action potential on the, uh, on the part of axon helix. When the, once the memory principle this is the threshold uh, value and uh, propagate uh, it through the axon to the other post neurons. We know spatial temporal integration behavior is a key feature of biological systems. And we know that when the input, when the interval of two different input at the same input terminal is different, it will affect the uh, generation of action potential. Also, the two inputs at a different uh, input terminal, uh, the, the, the different the, the interval time between them also could uh, uh, affect our neuron and uh, determine that uh, whether the neuron could uh, could fail or not. So we see that the spatial temporal integration behavior into the into the neuron with a higher computing power. We convince that the artificial neurons are key units for building a neuromorphic systems. And currently, according to the implementation uh, uh, measures of artificial neurons, the artificial neurons could be divided into many uh, three, three categories. Firstly, the CMOS based analog neuron that with substrate CMOS circuits. Second one is the CMOS based digital neuron that use the, lo the digital logic, logic gates to implement the, 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 the neural functions. We know the transistors that is, the, that is not invented for uh, emulating the biolog biological counterparts. That's the, uh, the, 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 the constructed neural circuits always has complex circuits and uh, limited integrating intensity. That's the emerging device, especially the memory cells with the volatile threshold switching behavior uh, has been, uh, I considered as a promising candidate for emulating uh, neurons in the proximal area because it's high uh, dynamics and high biological possibility. We hope it is hoped that it could uh, break the energy efficiency and the integration wall of CMOS neurons. According to the switching mechanisms, the memory service, the threshold switching devices can also be divided into three categories. First one is the time based threshold TS device, we call it the TOS device, uh, whose threshold switching behavior is resulted from the formation of a spontaneous rupture of silver or copper filament. This such a device with uh, the lowest uh, leakage current and the biological scale time constant. However, the endurance of this device is a big challenge. Second one is the motor materials, uh, the, the motor material based chest device, such as the vanadium oxide, niobium oxide. Such a device with the highest uniformity the highest endurance that could be more than 10 to 12 power, the fastest reading and speed in a nano shaking. Uh, however, the high leak current that uh, hinder its uh, practical application. So the one is the uh, TS device based on OTS transition. Uh, such a device is generally used as a selector for PC, PC drive. This device has a leak, has a medium leak current a medium uniformity, uh, faster switching speed. However, the, the endurance also has, also is, is, is the challenge of such a device. However, we know for practical applications, 
The endurance is a key component that cannot be overlooked. So considering this, the motor material based TSVS uh, has been has tracked great attention for uh, implementing artificial neurons. However, currently the especially the niobium oxide based motor materials. However, currently the niobium oxide based TS TS device still face great challenges on uh, low TS yield, high forming voltage, and leakage current. Next, uh, we will introduce our recent work on how to uh, optimize the niobium oxide based neuron devices for practical applications. So here we know the niobium oxide has complex uh, chemical components such as NBO, NBO2, and NB2O5. That's because the complex component, the NBOX, the, 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 the niobium oxide, oxide based uh, device generally has a, a variety of switching behavior, such as unipolar non volatile resistive switching and the uh, uh, and the non volatile bipolar uh, resistive switching or the integrated YSYR behavior. However, for neural applications, we just want a stable volatile threshold switching. Thus, that uh, this behavior generally occurs in the device that has more MBO2 component. Thus, we think that uh, we, we, we can mean that controlling the oxygen content, content in the MB in the niobium oxide device is a key to obtain stable threshold switching characteristics. So, considering this, we Based on such a uh, device structure and uh, through changing the oxygen flux during sputtering to obtain different, uh, obtain the niobium oxide with different oxygen components. The right figure shows the forming curve of such a device. We can see that not all devices could feature uh, threshold switching behavior during a sweeping back curve. In this here, we define a ratio of the device presenting the direct TS, uh, the, the direct threshold switching behavior after the, the first forming as the TS yield. And this slide shows the TS yield and forming voltage and the, uh, of the device and different oxygen flux. We can clearly obtain that with the decreasing the oxygen flux the TS yield uh, improved. If, uh, as even uh, when, the, when the oxygen flux is less than 0 0.2 SCCM, the TS yield, TS yield could obtain nearly 100%. Also, the forming voltage greatly decrease with decreasing the oxygen flux. So we conclude that the a device with low oxygen flux that has a better TS yield and lower forming voltage. So subsequently, we studied the stability of the device with different oxygen component. Left figure shows the device with low oxygen component. And the right figure shows the high the device with higher oxygen TS. Uh, oxygen uh, component. We can clearly obtain that these uh, all these curves, uh, this this data, each 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 figure shows 500 cycles. We can clearly obtain that the device with high oxygen component features higher stability than the low uh, oxygen ones. This figure uh, further so that the device, the low oxygen device with higher uh, or better uh, device to uh, device uniformity, where the higher oxygen device with better cycle to cycle, uh, cycle, -cycle uh, uniformity. So we consider that whether we could combine the merits of these two devices. Thus, we introduce a higher oxygen layer into the low oxygen device. 
that then, then fabricated the, such a stack device. A right figure shows the uh, switching voltage of this stack device. We can clearly obtain that the cycle to cycle and device to device variations are greatly improved. We, we think this is because that after forming, uh, a hair or hair flux oxygen layer forms uh, a local conductive pulse, which limits the current uh, diffusion and improves the uniformity of the device cycle to cycle and uh, device to device variations. Uh, fortunately, such a stacked device still maintain the high yield of low oxygen device and the forming voltage is just slightly higher than the low oxygen device. This results uh, confirm or provide the possibility for us to have take a, 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 a large scale integration of such a niobium oxide device. We further test the switching speed of such a device. We can see that the turn on or turn off speed, turn on or turn off speed is less than uh, 21 and, uh, and 38 nanoseconds respectively. Actually, the speed is faster than this value. This is because the tester, uh, tester process is limited by the testing machine and the device also has a good endurance. We can clearly uh, observe that the uh, threshold voltage and the hold voltage during the 10 to 9 hours are nearly unchanged. All these results uh, demonstrate that the fabricated niobium oxide is suitable for large-scale practical applications. Then based on such, uh, based on the next, I will introduce how to use the threshold switching device to build uh, uh, neural, neural circuits for uh, neural computing based on speaking neural networks. We first, uh, uh, fab first fabricated a uh, uh, leaf neuron circuit uh, based on TS device. That's uh, so in the top figure, it consists of a uh, uh, input a resistor, a capacitor, and a threshold switching device and a resistor. During working, the capacitor charges through the input uh, loop. Uh, once the voltage on the capacitor surpasses the, uh, the threshold voltage of the TS device, the TS device uh, turns on and it, uh, the capacitor discharges through the uh, discharge loop and generate an excellent potential, excellent spike at the read out resistor. Based on such a circuit, the all nothing spiking of an excellent potential, the threshold driving spiking, a refractory period and a strange modulated frequency response have been successfully demonstrated. Furthermore, for meeting different application requirements, we based on such a basic neural circuit to uh, redesign the structure. For, for example, the Vantivara neural circuit, we use the uh, parasitic capacitance for integration. Uh, the, 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 the frequency response of this circuit uh, matches a radio uh, function that is suitable for uh, AN and conversion based lessing applications. Another is a uh, temporal coding uh, neural circuit for temporal coding speaking on network applications. Also, the memory uh, CMOS hybrid neural circuit that with retro function could in situ tuning the, uh, the synapses. Due to the, uh, the, the limited time, so I will focus on the uh, temporal coding neural circuits. We know in temporal coded and speaking neural networks, the input signal uh, is encoded as the firing timing. That is, when the input intensity is here, the firing timing is earlier. During the inference process, the neural only need to uh, fire one time during one process. To meet this requirement, we, uh, we based on the basic uh, recording, spec recording neural circuit, 
and introduce the delays and the transfer gate to enable the, uh, the, 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 the requirement of the temporary coded uh, spiking neural networks. The red figure shows the output of such a neural circuit. We could uh, uh, observe that uh, at a different uh, in input intensity, the neuron only fire one time, and the higher the input intensity, the neuron fires earlier. Also, the firing timing is negatively uh, correlated with the intensity. We, it should be noted that due, due to the neural circuit only need to uh, fire one time. Thus, the device in such a neural circuit during inference only need to switch one time. So we uh, conclude that the, such a neural circuit is device friendly, which could alleviate, uh, alleviate, alleviate the burden of the uh, endurance requirement in, the, in those rate coding specking neural networks. To demonstrate the practical application of such those specking neural networks, uh, threshold switching neurons, we combine the threshold the TS neurons and the RM synapses to build a neuromorphic systems. During working, we mapped the, uh, the trained weights into the RM synapse array and use the TSDOS to uh, do the inference process. The results uh, we achieved the uh, 96% uh, uh, recognition accuracy on handwriting uh, minist and 21% uh, Tmax per large energy efficiency for fish recognition. Next, I will introduce how we use such neural circuits or we design neural circuits for neuromorphic sensing applications. We know that sensing is the beginning of the intelligence. The neuromorphic sensing system integrates the sense and the computing. Thus, the general specking neural networks need to uh, connect with the sensor array. However, we know the sensor with sensors generate uh, the generated signal in the sensors are analog. It could it need to be uh, to be it need a conversion model to convert the analog signal to specs for further processing by specking new networks. You know, in biologic system, the afferent nerve plays such a role. It could convert or transmit the analog uh, sense signal into action potentials. Also, the higher the input intensity, the higher up the, up the frequency. So inspired by the biological afferent nerve, we, uh, we built an artificial afferent nerve based on the LPM oxide uh, uh, device. Such so a circuit that consists of an uh, uh, input resistor and a LPM oxide device the capacitor could be parasitic or external. Based on such a circuit, it could convert since the analog signals into dynamic uh, frequency signals. To further uh, present the dynamic response of such a device, or uh, we can uh, we, we, we look at the uh, response of such a nerve. Um, uh, um, changed environmental signals. We uh, apply the sinusoidal, sinusoidal signal onto the earthly nerve. The output frequency, we can see here, the curve follows the uh, sinusoidal uh, sip. Also, when the input uh, intensity is too strong, the earthly nerve shows the protective inhibition. This means the earthly nerve has its maximum uh, frequency, after frequency, just like the biological neurons. Uh, this feature could help us to uh, maintain the balance of the system. We further connect the offering Offering nerve with a piezoelectric sensor, we can see that the output frequency dynamically changes with the input voltage and features a protective inhibition response and a strong stimulus input. 
this results so that our effort now could uh, um, provide a suitable transition of the analog uh, sync signals to specs. Also, such a friend nerve could be expanded to uh, such as visual sensors or thermal sensors. Furthermore, we know in human body, the, it, uh, the human body generally uh, since the, the since in, a, in uh, always uh, take the things in a multimodal uh, uh, measure. Uh, for example, we, if we catch the cap, we not only could uh, obtain the sleep the width, we could also uh, know the uh, temperature. Inspired by such a principle, we fabricated a multimodal fuse the neural sensor array that integrate a press sensor and earthly nerve to classify multimodal objects. Uh, we note that the, the, we use the intrinsic zoom response of the niobium oxide device to sense the, the temperature, we, uh, avoiding the use of external zoom sensor. This slide shows the details of the uh, multimodal fused sensor uh, neuron. And see that at a constant temperature, the oscillation frequency increase with increasing the pressure and the oscillation amplitude remains unchanged. And the constant temperature uh, and the constant pressure, the oscillation amplitude with decrease, can see here, decrease with increasing the temperature. But uh, and the frequency also increases. So next question is how we obtain the individual pressure and the thermal information in such a fused uh, uh, signal. We know the, the we know the up the up the amplitude is only related to the uh, temperature. So according to the up the amplitude, we can could we could obtain the current temperature, and the it's. And its temperature, the neuron has its specific uh, response curve. So according to the output frequency, we can obtain the current uh, pressure. That's uh, according to the VTs, also of uh, the output amplitude and the uh, output frequency, the temperature and the uh, pressure information can be decoupled to reflect the fidelity, fidelity of a single mode information. Also, this such uh, neuron only output one pulse string. It features data fusing and conversion capability. We uh, we then use uh, uh, such a uh, three cross three uh, sensor array to sense the living pattern for uh, with different temperatures, and uh, we collected uh, the data sets and then mapped the, and then input the signals to a specking network. The results so that the multi uh, the, the, if the data sets with multi mode information has higher recognition accuracy than the uh, data sets only with single mode. We further use it to sense the curves with different steps, temperatures, and widths uh, to show that uh, the capability to uh, recognize the objects with multi mode information. Uh, we uh, and uh, the results uh, confirm that we achieve the accuracy uh, of 96% with the multi-mode information, which is much higher than that uh, only with single mode information. So the such array could uh, improve the expression of object attributes compared to the single mode sensing. Okay, next we will land on to the end of my presentation. So the window the memory search provide a no or a physical uh, platforms for neuromorphic computings. For building uh, artificial neuron artificial neurons, we carried uh, after carried out our works um, on devices, neural circuits, and the system applications. As for the device, we optimized the niobium oxide based neural device and solved the problem of low yield and poor stability. However, we know the large leakage current and the switching mechanisms is still be a good, uh, still be a great challenge that needs to be further studied. Another question is uh, uh, among various, various threshold switching devices, which one 
is best for neural circuit design. We, 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 we don't have a key inclusion now. And I use the neural devices, we design several compact neural circuits for uh, different applications uh, based on spec neural networks for neuromorphic computing. Uh, however, we know the current neural circuit generally with discrete uh, discrete component. So the monolithic integration of neural circuits uh, need to be first studied. And uh, when we integrate the neural circuit with RM synapses, we need to consider the parameter uh, match problem. Another is the way uh, well, to face the application for neuromorphic sensing, we propose the afferent nerve and the multimodal fusing uh, neurons and expand the application in the field of sensing. However, you know, you, if we need to, in the future, need to maybe, uh, maybe uh, integrate the sensing and computing together, uh, then in that way, we need to consider the sensor parameter problems that need to match with the neural circuit. At last, I would like to thank uh, my three supervisors that always has been helping me a lot. Also, the collaborators that uh, their hard work on these works. Also, the funding from ASFC, China Postdoctoral Science Foundation, and the Shanghai Center for Renaissance and Brain Inspired Technology. Oh, let's go. Thanks. Um. Thank you, Dr. Zhang, give us this very interesting talk. So let's uh, have this uh, Q&A. Uh, uh, is there any questions? Uh, I think I have a, a more general um, type of questions. So uh, I think there are generally two ways, to two methodologies to study, the, uh, to develop neuromorphic computing chips. One is to fully mimic the brain by copy and paste the brain. The other one is just uh, use it as reference and uh, use some feature to mimic only some feature of the brain. So which one do you think at the current stage is more important in the study of neuromorphic hardware? Uh, I prefer the second one. Just like uh, for, for example, just like uh, the, 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 the airport we know, it uh, emulates the birds, but it not uh, fully copy birds. So I think the neuromorphic chip, the, the use is, uh, how to say, the practice use is a, the final, uh, is our final goal. So which one, which way could, uh, could, uh, could uh, uh, have its final application? I think uh, which one is the winner. Okay, okay, I have no other questions. Okay, so uh, if um, uh, no other question, uh, let's uh, thank Dr. Zhang for his uh, uh, lecture. Thank you. Thanks. And uh, uh, this um, uh, will, um, since all uh, five guest speakers have finished their lectures, uh, so this will conclude uh, this forum. And uh, thanks again for all five uh, guest speakers uh, for your, um, you know, uh, excellent uh, uh, presentations, lectures. And um, uh, also thank you the, all the audience uh, for uh, your attendance. Uh, we uh, hope you enjoy this forum. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, we can conclude this uh, this forum.